Well, uh, I think that uh, the problem is, uh, at least in the American context, not so much that television uh, presents entertaining subject matter, but that all subject matter becomes entertaining. Uh, I discovered a couple of things that uh, American television knows that the best way to gather an audience is to provide something that is amusing. And it may be, uh, Brian, we could get into this, that television may not be good for, for anything else. Uh, I mean, you'd probably want to quarrel with me on that, but uh, insofar as we're talking about American commercial television, that's what it, its best is, uh, to provide amusement in order to gather an audience. And so um, when Cronkite or, or Brokaw tried to do something serious, the, the first thing we know is that within no, uh, eight minutes, they're going to stop for a United Airlines commercial. Now, the point is, how serious can it be? Whatever it is that they're saying, if after eight minutes they're going to stop for United Airlines or Calvin Klein jeans. I mean, they could be, uh, and of course the same thing is with our uh, six o'clock and 11 o'clock news. How serious can a flood in Mexico be or an earthquake in, uh, in Japan if it is preceded by a Calvin Klein's jeans uh, commercial and followed by a yogurt commercial. I mean, that fact in itself so changes the content of what passes for news that uh, I find it um, an, an embarrassment to, um, uh, to the very idea of an informed public. In the first place, television is interested mostly in gathering an audience, and it does it by keeping people amused. In the second place, it may even be that television is not a suitable medium for the communication of serious ideas. After all, uh, an idea is sentences, language, and um, television is not a terribly comfortable with language. Its strong suit is the visual image. So that uh, when television <clears throat> does news, when um, it tries to do what uh, Americans now call political debates, <clears throat> this cannot be taken seriously um, by uh, an informed public. I mean, what is a debate? <clears throat> Someone like Barbara Walters says, first question for you, Mr. President, is what do you think uh, is the solution to the problem in the Middle East? You will have two minutes to answer, after which Vice President Mondale will have 60 seconds for rebuttal. Now, who can take that seriously? If Reagan and Mondale <clears throat> ha uh, were serious men, in fact, they would turn to Miss Walters and say, what kind of men do you think we are? But in fact, none of that ever happens. Reagan does answer, and Mondale does give his rebuttal, and everyone goes on with this charade that television is informing the public. In fact, television, I would argue, is not. It's amusing the public, and that this is not a, a legitimate form of political discourse, but is taken right from uh, the values of show business. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only has Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. Your Twitter account... Welcome to the Hungry for Power Games. <laughs> Candidates, assemble. You've got some telling passages about TV news, one of your points being that 
news items really are irrelevant in the sense that there's nothing in them that you can act upon. You seldom see a bulletin which makes you alter your agenda for the day. Every night people tune in and they get all sorts of information with which they can do nothing. And I think this tends to uh, create a certain sense of impotence in people to be hearing about all of these things, but not being able to act in any way on this information, I think is a terrible burden and a, and a, a, a kind of psychological stress. After all, the whole idea of information is to use it in order to act on the world. The notion of having information in your head with which you can do nothing is really a quite modern idea. Television is a, is, a, is a window to the world, as all television executives like to say. But it's, it's a curious kind of window. With interesting distortions and refractions, it presents a, a fragmented world. Um, I mean, this would be typical, wouldn't it, Brian, of uh, uh, something happening uh, uh, on the news, let's say, the voiceover says, or the uh, newscaster, as he's called, says, more shooting in Beirut today than we see some film of a street, perhaps in Beirut, uh, a body on the floor. We hear shots, um, maybe see a woman leaning over the body. Uh, this image is powerful. So people know of Beirut. They know there's shooting in Beirut. Do they know who's shooting at whom? Or why? Or what is the historical context for this? Uh, television news doesn't s speak to that. David Halberstam did an interesting piece in TV Guide about a year ago about the growth of the Japanese economy that this story had been building for years. But Americans really didn't know about it, mostly because there were no visuals to show. So the television, for all practical purposes, ignored it. What could you show? And television creates the illusion of people's having real knowledge about these things. Uh, and uh, therein lies a problem. I mean, it doesn't have to be a problem. If people understood what television is best at doing and what it cannot do, then I think we'd be in a much better uh, condition. You want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. Calvin Klein jeans. <laughs>